here's the actual map of Europe showing all the U.S. and NATO military bases from Great Britain all the way down to Turkey, and all aimed at Moscow. Obviously, the Russians know this. You even see it in Northern Africa. Got yeah, it. but I mean, if you look at Ukraine right now and you understand that the eastern end of Ukraine was to be the site of new missiles and new forces from NATO, it becomes entirely understandable why the Russians said enough is enough right. and why Belarusia and Russia are now united in resisting the NATOization, if you will, of Ukraine. And the Russians have no aspirations to attack anybody in the West. They want to do business with everybody in the West. Right. Here's the hypothetical map of what the same number of missiles would look like if surrounding the United States in well, Canada, Mexico, in Cuba. The only problem with the Canadian one is the missiles are in the wrong direction. They're not aimed at Detroit or Chicago or New York or D.C. You can get the point. How would... How would we react? Would start World War III if the Russians had missiles or the Chinese had missiles like that? Well, of course, uh, what we don't bother telling people is if you look in the Pacific and in the Atlantic off the coast of the United States, there are large numbers of submarines. The Russian submarines now can compensate for the absence of Russian missile forces or ground forces in either Canada or Mexico. We don't seem to understand how vulnerable we are. This is back to the problem of you know, what if we used a nuclear weapon, a, a, strate a tactical nuclear weapon? Well, you've got submarines sitting in the Atlantic right now and the Pacific that'll simply push a button and the missiles will fly. Mm. Everything has changed. Warfare has changed. The whole idea of garrisoning people's countries on the periphery of another country, it's, it's anachronistic thinking.